Good morning from near Bray. Um, we've actually been moved on since we last left you. Um, so we moved from Maidenhead, where we left you actually, and we moved down to Bray Lock, and we didn't realise we are actually on a lock landing. There are lock landings here on the Thames compared to a lock landing on the canal, about four or five times the length, and I read on a forum as to like where to more and someone recommended that spot but we got a knock about seven o'clock at night from the lock keepers and we got moved in the morning it was nice enough but yeah we've been here for a day had a mental couple of days off the boat but today we are moving on to windsor and then maybe a little bit further because we haven't told you yet but i think might have been the last video probably last video um Chertsey lock on the thames has a massive stoppage on it for the foreseeable future uh, but there's actually some emergency passages on the 5th and 6th of october and we've actually managed to get through on one of those so we need to get there for two o'clock tomorrow so we've got a fair stint of cruising still but should be okay get on the move in a minute Just realised we were on the downstream. No, we're on the upstream moorings. The ones down here have got better visibility coming out. So I literally couldn't see if anything was coming. Oh. We should have been down here, but a oh, well. lot of rowers and stuff. About three or four narrow boats have passed us today, and the wide beam's just gone by. Had a massive hotel boat earlier. Well, not even a hotel boat, was it? You said it looked like someone's living on it. Right, we've got a lock coming up. We're water point and services, so we might wash the roof because it's pretty grubby. So try that, and then yeah, on towards Windsor for a little hour out or something, and then we'll cruise on past Windsor. More up tonight, ready to have an early start to get to Chertsey tomorrow for two, and then on to Teddington from Chertsey tomorrow. Wait at Teddington, and that's a uh, overnight mooring waiting for the high tide and then we'll go down with that there's two hours where the river from Teddington is tidal so we've got to wait for the right time slot then we get to Brentford a lot going on Bit of an unplanned stop but we're going to wash the roof here just in case the water point's on the other side because this is the grubbiest side to us we've got more in does that make sense once we've got more in this side we're going to clean this side nice That's how grubby it gets, do you? Yeah. I don't think we've ever properly washed the whole roof, have we, since we painted it? No. Pretty bad. It's just finding the time. When you get to a water point, you can't be sat at a water point washing your boat, really. Although some people do. We just feel a bit bad if people are waiting. Now, finding a decent mooring where you can actually get onto the boat safely. Uh, it does make it pop better, though, doesn't it? Yeah. <gasps> oh! Did that. One clean roof for the time being, till probably a week's time, and it looked just as bad. I have been collecting the seeds which I've been meaning to for ages. I let our lettuce go to seed, oh, although okay. some of them have actually started growing again because it's been quite mild in the pot. But I'm going to collect these and then they can grow them again next year. Castle, I believe. It is, isn't it? Look at the size of it. Bloody hell, I've never been. I remember school. Wow, I think I've never been that big. Got a nice clay looking plank 
<laughs> I was expecting some like gold plated rings or something. Yeah, what's going on? Oh. Oh. I thought it'd be a beach by now, so that's a start. I think we're beats anyway. Ten pounds. What overnight? Tw up to twenty-four hours. Ah. Either genius or stupid. I'm not sure yet. What are you doing, Joe? Joe. Joe. Genius. Let's go look at that. Heat, we're right below heat right now. I think weight down, yeah, stand on there. Don't stand on there. Castle's closed on Wednesdays and it's Wednesday. I thought I'd try and get the drone up to get with the castle background, but as you might have realised already, there's an airport right behind it, so it's restricted zone. Can't take it off. It's probably the castle as well, you know. What, the castle goes and fly into it? Can you? Oh, well, that makes sense. We need to pay for a mooring. And it's up to 24 hours, which is £10, which is good, but we're literally going to be here for about an hour, so begrudgingly going to pay that. Who do I need to call? So we're going to say bye to Windsor for the evening. We're going to move on a little bit just so we're less rushed tomorrow. Um, probably on to Egham, there's a few nice moorings there. Um, so probably an hour and a half, two hours cruise maybe, a couple locks. Are you cooking up a storm or making a mess? I'm making a vegan like pasta lasagna thing. Lovely. Cashew butter. Seven out of ten. Nice little high street. Seven out of ten. Didn't see the queen. She's dead. Castle's shut. She's dead. Didn't see the king. Right. Castle's shut. If the castle's open, we're doing twenty-eight quid each anyway. It is stunning though. I'll stick to Legoland, I think. Weird vibration. Right. So it's keep well to the right. Yeah, oh, this is the right. Yeah. <laughs> I've got all that poo. People pay a lot of money going boat trips under these bridges. Mm -hmm. We've done loads, haven't we? You get them free. Oh, not for free, for that. No, there is a, there is a greater cost. <laughs>
you? What have we got Hot there? Golden milk. Just coming past some greenery now and there's some quite strict mooring signs all along saying property of the Crown Estate and under section 129 or something you must keep off strictly no access. So, serious organised crime if we join here. If you go on there that's classed as serious organised crime. <laughs> It's just part of the Windsor Castle stuff, I think. So we've got the closest thing on Google Maps is Castle Arena. We are at Windsor Old Lock. Um, it's just gone to five, I think, so the lock keepers have gone, so it's off service. Free toilet. Yeah. Not quite equalised if you're right. Open. I'll get the boat. What am I doing? Left? No, right. Right. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Is there any more plastic in that hole? Huh? Is there any more plastic? In where? Wherever that was before. Plastic? Like it sucked it up. Oh no, gearbox this is. Um. back at some of the noises that the gearbox was making actually makes me cringe. I was in full on denial that we weren't about to break down at any minute. We do monumentally break down towards the end of the video, but for now I'd like to thank this week's sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark is a virtual private network, aka VPN, and it's one of the cheapest and safest ways of keeping your data private online. It comes in the form of a app or browser extension, and it works by encrypting all the data sent between your device and the internet, so make sure that no one can steal all of your sensitive information en route. This is particularly important when using free public Wi-Fi. As tempting as it is, it's just not that safe to use without some form of protection. It's always better to be safe than sorry, and the best way of keeping yourself safe is with a VPN. Surfshark is the only VPN to offer unlimited devices through one subscription, so go and share it with your family and friends. It literally costs a couple of quid a month, and for peace of mind, I think it's well worth it. Also, it allows you to virtually set your device's location to 100 countries. Recently in France, I used Surfshark to access ITV so I could watch the Rugby World Cup. Those points are taken every time we get down into the red zone, the opposition danger. And part of me wishes I didn't bother. None more important than this. Off it goes between the posts. Spring for the unlikeliest of World Cup glories ends here on a wet night in Paris. So if Shark are running a bit of a Black Friday deal at the minute, so if you use code Danny and Joe, you'll not only get a crazy discount, but you'll also get up to six months for free as well. I'll leave a link in the description and pinned comment for you to go and check that out. But for now, be back to me in full denial mode. Oh. 
paddle steamer front spudders. Like the ones in New Orleans? Yeah, sort of like that. Uh, where well, I'm hoping to moor tonight, for any history buffs. I know it's important, but I don't know that much about it, but the Magna Carta was signed just up here. 12, 15 AD. Before you were born. Yeah, like a thousand years before I was born, nearly. Magna Carta. I had to. Well, I'm a bit hungry now, you know. Got your vegan pasta dish coming right I'm, up. I can't say I'm keen on that noise that's making. Not sure. Stop, stop, stop. Oh. People are on those bits of wood. We haven't got any of them. Huh? Everyone's on those bits of wood. Oh, they? <laughs> it's concrete. <laughs> what the fuck? Stung me. Huh? Stung me. What stung you? What? <laughs> Joe seems to have hit a wasp nest. Am I going to get off the back? I'll get it. Hold the boat. Sadly it looks like bees, but it might be wasps. Uh, nest. So that's good then. Just stung his little finger, bless him. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if it went right in, but I just felt a sting and it was right on my hand. Oh. At least you didn't get all moored up and discover there's one there. <laughs> I've never known them so low to the ground, have you? No, I must. I don't know. No mooring. We're going to go by, um, not quite by the wasp nest, but back on that bit because it's obviously mooring. It's getting dark though, so we're going to have to just turn in quickly in the River Thames. Well, that was a bit of a dramatic mooring yesterday with the bee stings. We've got to turn around. Oh, look at the steamer coming. That again. I can. <laughs> you make me say things twice, but I mean oh, it when I say cute. it. It's, that was cute. It's nice being on the river, isn't it? Just all these different things you see. So today we have to get to Chertsey by two o'clock for our passage there through the lock that's technically closed. And then after that we need to get to Teddington, which is probably another four or five hour cruise and that's where we're going to spend the night ready for an early morning to get through the tidal part of the Thames up to Brentford or down to Brentford. Yeah. Get it in reverse, go the other way, turn it the other way. That's it. A few more revs. Could more I revs. have just gone the whole way around with that? I'm not sure. What might have ended up in a tree? It's the first time we've shared a lot with narrowboats, I think. Yeah, two other narrowboats. Out in force. They're all going through Chertsey as well, I think. They've got the later book in three o'clock. A380. Dark, but we are under the M25, which is the ultra low admission zone, which basically means we're in London. Yeah, I'd say this is we're in London now. M25. <laughs> what do you think about this, Sadiq Cam? Joe! 
It'll only be a few years before there's actual controls against diesel engines on boats, I'm sure. So just enjoy it while you're asking. Yeah. Lovely little wilderness out of the sticks on the Thames all the way from Semington nonetheless. Oh really? They are so cute. Can we get one? Yeah, I'd have one. Holiday boat. Just got to Chertsey. Looks like there's not really a queue or anything. The guys in front of us got the one booked for one o'clock and the guys behind us got three o'clock booked. So we're way ahead, way early, because it's 20 past 11, that's not what I'm saying. But it's that someone is actually coming to check. I, th I reckon they will do. I was expecting like tailbacks right the way up, but. <laughs> so once we get through here, we then got two hours up to Sunbury. So it'll be a total of three hours plus the best part of another hour, so four hours to get to Teddington where we'll spend the night ready for the early morning. I think eight o'clock um, is the earliest time we can get through Brentford, so we need to leave at least an hour before that, leave about seven. Um, you're going to have to come off yep. the boat, um, secure bound stern, yep. uh, engine off, and then come off the boat and manage the boat as it's cool. going yep. down. Uh, don't get back on the boat until the gates are open. Yep. And then... Cool. Alright. That's it. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. So that's us through Chertsey Lock, which was the main hurdle that we had really. Um, event free? What's the word? Just, yeah, not a lot to write home about really. I don't know what boring. is actually wrong with it, but um, yeah, we got through fine. About five boats. They made us get off the boat, didn't they? We had to get off the boat just in case. <laughs> Yeah, it made us get off the boat, I'm not sure what's wrong there. No, still none the wiser as to what's wrong with it, but they appear, they didn't even check our booking, they're just letting boats through, so I think it's just a um, cautionary thing really, just in case it got really busy, and it, I think the actual process of letting the paddles up and stuff is a lot slower than a normal lock, so next stop, four hours to Teddington. Although it might stop, I can't remember, there might be somewhere cool on, on route, maybe we stop off a bit of lunch or something. What's just happened? Just lost gear, just lost drive. Just sort of come into more right, put it in reverse, and it's just still no connection at all. Um. Move your cut. What's happened? It's completely disconnected. The gearbox? The gearbox, come off. How the hell are you going to do anything about that? River Canal Rescue, I think. No, we are just literally on, on the lock landing itself, luckily. So literally just gone through Chertsey Lock and Weir. Um, I noticed a bit of a strange 
strange noise um, and then I, I tried as we approach in the lock I put it into reverse and there's just no, no resistance at all and the engines just revved and not not stopped us at all so I managed to managed to jump off the boat with the the center line and just pull the boat in um, but yeah just literally lost all drive and I've opened up the engine hatch and I can see the gear gearbox shaft has come attached from the engine um, so I guess the bolts have vibrated loose or something that was holding it together Cheers. That was 30 pound call out, no idea when they're going to come, but at least we're through that lock, but we've got Church, not Chertsey, we've got Brentford tomorrow, which is going on Tidal Thames, um, which we might have to rebook at this rate. Yeah. Couldn't have happened in a better place though. That's Justin, a, just do you know, I think when I went and told the lady, I think she's probably heard oh, yeah, yeah, how yeah. convenient it's on the morning with a toilet. <laughs> Classic though, isn't it? I can't believe that actually if happened. That, right if that here. happened on the tidal Thames, I'd have <laughs> myself. I, can't, I just got in close enough to be able to jump off the boat with a centre line. But what are the chances of it actually happening whilst you're about to pull in? Because what would happen if we were just cruising a second before? We'd just be floating around. We'd just be floating. Until the thingy came, or uh, boat, another boat pull up so I didn't tow you in. <sighs> Look at this though. Go ahead. Either these bolts have sheared or just vibrated loose. That's the dry shaft. They should be bolted into the bell. Who put that in? You? I did. You did it. I did it. It's your fault. Yeah. I can't believe it. Honestly. Look at it. It's just. A d to be fair, like we've just been we've been moving for hours and hours a day. Just saying off camera as well, like before this, like we get pretty tired of moving now. Like as, as nice as this is, obviously we just want to get to London now, but we are doing long days, like days that people would do over months and months, like this journey. So I think when and if we do this journey again, it would obviously be a lot slower. But in that time, obviously maybe the bolts have just you know because it's, it's a lot of engine now, isn't it? The time hasn't it? So RCR have been in touch, they're going to send someone out tomorrow, um, an engineer to just assess it and see if they can do it on the spot, if not then they'll have to come back another day and book it in um, for a proper repair at a boatyard I guess, but I mean as you guys probably seen I've actually had the engine up myself and it's probably my fault that the bolts have come undone somewhere along the line I guess, um, and I managed to do it up by myself so we'll see if they can do it tomorrow, but I guess Let's wait and see. We've rebooked um, Brentford. Brentford we've booked for two two days ahead, so not tomorrow. Not like I said, day after, so three days time. Fingers crossed, we can get something sorted by then. I thought I'd better film a little recap just in case nothing that we filmed yesterday made sense. We're both a little bit stressed. RC, uh, oh no, I was talking about it at the start of the beginning. I? So as we were coming up to Lock Landing here at Shepparton, went to put the um, more so control into reverse put it into reverse and nothing happened. <laughs> the engine just started revving so I put it further and further back. Put it into neutral, I think I tried to put it back into reverse again, just nothing. Fortunately we were right by the lock landing, so I managed to jump off with the centre line, pulled the boat to a bit of a stop, luckily there's some bollards and stuff there. Um, had a look inside the engine bay and seen straight away that the gearbox had just come away from the engine. Um, I was actually able to shake it side to side, it was yeah, completely come apart. So we phoned RCR, luckily we just renewed our membership, I think it expired honestly like a month ago but we renewed it, would have expired about a month ago. They phoned back to say that someone w wouldn't be able to come out that day but they'd be there the next day which is today. Um, didn't hear a call this morning but around 11 o'clock I want to say, maybe a little bit after, a guy called Pete came. Um, had a look at it, sized up whether we could use our spare because his worry was that the bolts had actually sheared off um, which is more common to happen so we wouldn't be able to use our existing gearbox because it's aluminium and steel bolts would just completely shred out the threads. Um, checked our spare gearbox and that's not actually moving smooth at all but our existing one was actually quite good condition. What we managed to do is clear out all the threads, put six new bolts on, six new washers, lock tight or thread lock put it all back in and it's running now and so smooth changing between um, forward and backwards I think there's a proper term for that um, so it must have been ever so slightly loose for ages and every time you sort of put it into gear it's just banging in it's really it was quite loud looking back at it um, but now it's honestly so smooth there was also only five bolts fitted and not six 
which <laughs> isn't going to help. Um, so today we're just going to move off the lock landing because the lock keeper is nice. We obviously said we can't move anyway, but so we've been on the lock landing overnight. Then move down to the next available moorings. Now, because we've had to put our Brentford passage backwards, we're supposed to come up off the Thames. Um, that's 8 a.m. this morning. Obviously, that's not happened. The next available booking was Sunday, so we've got this is Friday now, it's got Saturday, and then Sunday we have to be uh, down at Brentford through Teddington. Because we've got a spare day now, we're going to meet up with our friend Sam and Hannah again. That's two Fridays in a row. They live like 20 minutes away from here, so we're going to go for dinner there. Um, friend Sam's an engineer, so he actually said if we, they couldn't fix it RCR, then we'd give it a good go today. But fortunately, he's just going to cook us dinner instead. So we better get on the way. Earlier, I actually managed to fit a hand soap washing bottle that's been sat here for a little while. Fitted that earlier, and I cleared out <laughs> the bath waste because Danny's hair has blocked it up, hasn't it? Aww. I Quite considerably. To yeah, but we haven't done it since, and I try to take it out of the bath. Like if I see my hair going down, I will pick it out. But obviously, over time, like one hair after one hair, mm. soon adds up, doesn't it? Yeah. Also, last night I sat down and watched a video on how to set up the camera settings on this camera that we're using, the EOS R7, because when I sent it in for warranty repair, they did a full factory reset, so all the audio, all of the autofocus, loads of different settings had all gone, and we've been filming probably two videos now with dodgy settings, and I was looking back at some of the footage and the audio, and it's yeah, really quite bad, so hopefully it'll be better from now on. Are we ready? Oh, that went on. What? I don't know if I showed the ferry. Oh, did you stop recording? I don't know. Back there, Danny was supposed to be recording, is the ferry that we took, which Ooh. cost £5 return side to side. There we are. <laughs> Job done. Sorry. One negative of mooring riverside in rustic locations. Oh, stop. Was that you? What do you mean, was that me? Please go away. Oh, made a dog's dinner of that, didn't you? Can everyone just pick up their dog shit? <laughs> Hello. Hello. 